Yes, class, let us continue again with our lessons from uh, the criminal procedure. I think this will be lesson two. So, lesson two will be dealing with, uh, uh, I think we should be dealing with bail more specifically, right? That this is now section 60 of uh, the criminal procedure. Right, we look at the constitution and uh, the constitution says, um, there's something called a right to freedom, okay? There's called a right to freedom. I, I think it's section 12 of the Constitution. So if you look at section 12, it will tell you of the right to freedom and security of the person. So if you're in prison, you're not secured because you're exposed to danger of other criminals that can stab you. This is what happens, or they can even kill you. So you're not safe there, and you are not given your right to freedom. You're not free. You can't move uh, around and go to wherever you want. So that the provision of that section says everyone has the right to freedom and security of the person, which includes the right not to be deprived of their freedom without good reason by the police or any person, not to be locked up in prison without trial, to be free from all forms of violence and torture, not to be treated or punished in a cruel, inhumane, or degrading way, to make decisions concerning reproduction, to security in and control over their body, and not to be forced to participate in medical or scientific experiments. As with all the rights in the Bill of Rights, there is also the responsibility to not infringe on another person's freedom and security of persons. So that is what is entailed in section 12 of the Constitution. Right. If you if you go to section 13, section 13 will be dealing with the prohibition on slavery, servitude and forced labor. So there, that section, uh, uh, the, the provision in that section are that uh, it uh, prohibits anyone from being forced to work for someone else. Nobody may enslave you. Remember, if you are legally employed, your employer may have certain legitimate expectations with which you would need to comply. So if you somebody says, I am, I've employed you, I'm going to pay you a thousand rand, you must do this work, you must do that work because that is what is expected of you. Right? The examples of uh, violations that are prohibited in with this uh, section 13 are something like forced sex work. That means if you are forced to go and stand on the road uh, for the benefit of another person, that is slavery. Being forced to work uh, to receive access, uh, forced to work to receive access to passports and uh, and child labor. Child, child labor is not allowed in South Africa. You're not allowed to make your children work for payment but you can teach your children to work in the garden but they should not go and when as they are supposed to be in school they are busy in the fields working so that you can get money that is not allowed it's called child labor and also about the passports somebody will say okay because you are from malawi we are going to uh, allow you to work here in south africa but so that you don't go away when you feel like we are going to keep your passport, that is slavery, that is servitude, it's not allowed in South Africa. So those are the things that you need to observe. Now, um, I said we are going to deal with bail. How do you go about getting someone who is arrested? Bail. How do we do it? We do it by way of an application. Go there. Uh, before we go there, let's just deal with the second question, right? Before we go to bail, let us do the second question. The second question will be, um, criminal procedural rules cannot operate in isolation, in isolation from common law and fundamental constitutional rights, such as the right to life, human dignity, and uh, privacy now distinguish between and briefly discuss the differences between substantive and adjectival law. 
That is the question. Right? How do we deal with that? So the answer to that will be substantive law compromises legal rules determining the rights and the duties of individual and the state and both private and public law are part of substantive law. So when we, when we say the procedure, the rules of the, of the high court or the magistrate court, that is substantive law. All these laws, whether it's, it's public law or private law, they are subject to substantive law. They are substantive law. Substantive, and then there's also something called substantive criminal law, which determines the prerequisite for criminal liability and prescribes the elements of various specific crimes. So if you are saying somebody is guilty of an offense, um, you must make sure that all the elements of that crime are complied with, are in that crime. When you, when you, when you define that crime, all the elements must be there. Before you charge a person, you make sure that all the elements of the crime are there. Like for instance, um, theft. Theft will be the unlawful and intentional depriving uh, uh, or, or removing the property of another with the, with the intent to permanently deprive that person of his position. That is theft. So if one of the elements is not there, if you, if you, you, you did not intend to dep deprive the person of uh, his or her position permanently, if you, you took something with the with the aim of retaining it later, that is not theft. So it's not theft, okay? And if if, if uh, you took something by mistake, you had no intention of taking it, you took it by mistake, it was in your bag, right? You had uh, somebody's cell phone in, in the bag and you drove the bag away, you took it, and now it's found in your position because this is your bag. You had no intention to take it, so there is no theft, okay? So the elements of a crime are very important, right? It also attaches a sanctions to, to the breach of its prohibitions. However, the mere threat of criminal sanctions would serve no purpose. Therefore, the measures to enforce the sanctions are provided by the adjectival law. Then the law will say, what kind of punishment are we going to uh, meet to this individual because he has committed this offense, okay? Adjectival law puts substantive criminal law into action and the rules of criminal procedure from, from part of adjectival law, right? The rules of criminal procedure form part of adjectival law. So this is how it's done. The way it is done, right? Is, it will be adjectival law. Okay, that will be the answer. Go and do a research. If you don't understand, you come back to me, uh, consult with me at the law clinic, then we can go through so that you understand everything that we have said in this video or in class. That is very important. You go to my YouTube channel. You know my YouTube channel, African Dignity. All these, you'll just put um, the heading that is now, if you say uh, uh, criminal procedure, uh, legal practice A, or you say legal practice A, criminal procedure, then you will find these uh, uh, videos and uh, listen to them so that you can listen to them repeatedly because they will be your answers in your test and in your exams. Okay, now, so, so far, let us... Uh, let us stop there for now and then we will continue in another